Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I am Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. While addressing believers gathered in St Peter's Square on Sunday after the customary Angelus, Pope Francis tendered an apology to the authorities of the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan for postponing his apostolic visit. The Holy Father was slated to visit both African nations from July the 2nd to the 7th. However, a ligament issue which hampers his movements made doctors advise him to reschedule his proposed visit. The Pope said he is optimistic about making the trip as soon as possible. He also requested the faithful to pray that the apostolic visit to both countries takes place soon. It was on Friday that the Holy See Press Office Director Matteo Bruni announced that the papal visit had been postponed. The date of the rescheduled visit is yet to be announced. The relics of two apostles of Jesus and four other saints have been discovered in the ruins of a church in Iraq. Workers renovating the church of Mar Toma in Mosul stumbled upon the priceless relics last week. The relics of St Theodore, a 3rd century martyr, were the first to be discovered on June the 4th. Archbishop of Mosul, Mor Nicodemus Sharaf, retrieved the stone casket containing the relics from a niche in a stone pillar in the presence of church leaders. Later, the bone fragments of St John the Evangelist and St Simon the Apostle were also discovered. Along with them, the relics of St Simeon, who received the infant Jesus at in the Temple of Jerusalem, Mor Gabriel, a bishop of Tur Abdin in Turkey, and St Gregorios Bar Hebraeus, a 13th century prelate, were also retrieved by workers. On Sunday, the Holy Father reminded believers that they should not get accustomed to the war that is raging in Ukraine. Pope Francis urged the faithful to remember the suffering masses in the Eastern European nation and to pray for them and to strive for peace. He said the thought of the war-afflicted people of Ukraine remains vivid in his heart. The Pope also condemned child labour as the day marked the World Day Against Child Labour. He invited everyone to eliminate this scourge and to ensure that no child is deprived of his or her fundamental rights. Cardinal Marcello Semeraro, the prefect of the Dicastery for the Causes of Saints, has beatified ten Polish nuns who were martyred by Soviet troops in 1945. The ceremony took place in the Wrocław Cathedral on Saturday. During the homily, the top prelate compared the heroic martyrdom of the nuns who belonged to the Sisters of St. Elizabeth Congregation to the situation in Ukraine. He said the whole lives of these nuns was a gift of self in service to the poor and the neediest. Cardinal Marcello Semeraro highlighted that their selfless love was so heroic that they chose not to abandon their apostolate even when the Red Army arrived. The prelate also urged Polish believers to fervently pray through the intercession of the Blessed Sister Pascalis Jan and her nine companions. Sister Pascalis died defending her chastity when attacked by a Soviet soldier on May 11th in 1945. Founded in Nyssa in 1810, the congregation takes care of the sick and the needy in Europe, Asia, Africa and South America. Across the USA on Saturday, tens of thousands of protesters took part in demonstrations in hundreds of locations seeking curbs on gun violence. This comes after last month's mass shooting in a Texas school that left 21 dead, including 19 children. Demonstrators demanded lawmakers introduce a bill that brings gun control. In the demonstration in Washington, 40,000 people took part. The march in the Capitol was conducted by March for Our Lives. This outfit was established by students who survived the 2018 mass shooting at a school in Florida's Parkland. A recent series of mass shootings have brought the debate on gun violence to the forefront. Recently, a group of senators belonging to both main parties pledged to strike a deal to curb gun violence. They are focusing on giving incentives to states that pass red flag laws that permit authorities to seize guns from individuals who are considered to be dangerous. The head of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria has deplored the abysmal level of insecurity plaguing the nation. Archbishop-elect Lucius Ugorji, who heads the Episcopate, made this observation during the Golden Jubilee celebration of the Apostolic Administrator of Oweri, Archbishop John Valentine Obina, on Friday. Archbishop-elect Ugorji said that Nigerians are living in fear as the country is bleeding and blood is flowing like a river. He said this is the backdrop of the Pentecost Sunday massacre in a church in Ondo Diocese that left 50 people dead. Meanwhile, eight prelates of Lagos and Ibadan visited the parish in Ondo, where the attack took place on June the 5th. 
After visiting the bishop and local authorities, they went to the hospitals to comfort and pray with the victims of the attack. Separately, Bishop Jude Arogondade of Ondo Diocese has criticised Irish President Michael D. Higgins for saying that climate change had a role to play in the massacre in St Francis Xavier Church. He said the statement by the President was incorrect and far-fetched. In Iraq, Shiite leader Muqtada al-Sadr, the head of the alliance of the main forces in parliament, has declared that efforts to return usurped houses and property of Christians to the rightful owners will continue. It was under his leadership that the initiative to return illegally acquired real estate to Christians was undertaken in 2021. During the Islamic State occupation, many Muslims acquired the homes and property of Christians who had fled the country. Al-Sadr has signed a new document that explains the expansion of the committee that oversees the handing over of property to its rightful owner. This has been done to address the growing number of complaints received by the committee. So far, as many as 120 houses, farmlands and buildings have been returned to Christians and Mandians under the initiative. Yet another incident of the misuse of the blasphemy law has been reported from Pakistan. A court in the Punjab province of the country has upheld the death sentence given to two Christian brothers who allegedly posted blasphemous content on a blog. The Lahore High Court upheld the verdict, awarding capital punishment to Kaiser and Amun Ayub. According to the UK-based Centre for Legal Aid, Assistance and Settlement, which is supporting the duo, the others never posted anything blasphemous on the internet. The interdenominational organisation said the two were accused of blasphemy after Kaiser got into an altercation with his colleagues at the workplace in 2011. They were arrested four years later after police reopened the case. A trial court found them guilty in December 2018 and they were punished with a fine of 500 US dollars and the death sentence. The British outfit has submitted an appeal before the Lahore High Court against the death sentences. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And remember, you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.